All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about maps and how we're gonna use them to do hikes. We're gonna look at two main areas. We're gonna talk about pre-trip planning, use maps to figure out where to go and some idea of the trip we're gonna to do. You're gonna kind of plan a trip, a little bit like we do with a dream trip, uh, and look at like where we most likely camp, what's our backup camp, uh, and so forth, and learn a little bit how to use maps to do that. And then we're gonna go outside and we're gonna use maps to uh, orient ourselves to the landscape and help keep us from getting lost and figure out how to use a compass and, and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about like some of the maps and books and things out there. Um, this is the way if I want to go on a hike I start out with. I'm, I'm, I'm cer certainly searching online and then I find something that I want and often I'll, I'll buy a book. There's way more information in these things than you'd ever find online. Uh, a lot of effort goes into them so they're often much much better. And of course, these have maps, they have elevation profiles, uh, suggestions on where to camp, concerns and dangers and so forth. Um, so these books are, are great. Uh, and just about any place that you'll go, Rocky Mountain National Park, Yellowstone is going to have uh, a guidebook to hiking there. So I'd suggest, particularly for anything big that you're going to do, at least go to the library and check one of these things out. Um, and then, of course, there, there's regular maps. Uh, we've been talking about the, the Trails Illustrated maps. Uh, so here's a couple, Grand Teton, uh, Colorado 14,000 footers. And then <clears throat> if you uh, start going out west, it be Forest Service maps. So the Forest Service makes a series of maps that people use for hiking. Um, here's an example from Gallatin National uh, forest the west half some of these are pretty good this one's actually used on made on that paper that's um, uh, waterproof and so I can take this out in the field if it gets wet it's not going to turn into a, a soggy rag um, and it's a pretty useful scale it covers a really, fairly large area what it doesn't have is is topo lines so you know unless I really know a lot about this area um, it may not be enough to actually plan uh, the the day-to-day -day part of the hike um, and probably the best map for that, those, those Trails Illustrated ones are pretty good. Uh, let's, let's pull out one of the Grand Teton here. And they were meant for this. They've got topo lines. They're, they're, they're a large enough scale that it shows some detail. Um, so let's say like Death Canyon here. I want to be able to hike into Death Canyon. Uh, I can... I've got information about the, the what's north, where the trailheads are, uh, where the main trails are, uh, and for some place like Grand Teton, actually where the designated campsites are, uh, where you'll have to stay if you're in a, a national park. Um, and then I think these are, um, I have to look up what the details of that, but the, some of these have specific things for the places like um, Grand Teton. And then what we're going to use out in the field is going to be a, a USGS topo map. Okay, so USGS topo maps. These came in a variety of different, or do come in a variety of different uh, scales or series. Um, this one of Yellowstone says a one to one hundred thousand. So that's a, 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 a kind of a medium scale map. Shows a fairly large area. This is two maps to cover all of Yellowstone. And then there's the one to twenty four thousand series, and those don't have a nice cover. They're just kind of often folded maps like this. You'll know that they're one to twenty-four thousand. Um, uh, it'll say that right here in the in the scale, and these all look the same. I don't have enough room here to kind of show you all of this, uh, but they kind of have USGS in the top corner, and then there'll be the name of the map. And you guys are going to be looking at these um, online and downloading one for a couple different places. So this is probably the best place for you to to do trip planning. Uh, and this is one that I use. This is from New Mexico, Wheeler Peak, which is the highest peak in New Mexico. I climbed it back when I was about your age in college. So a few things about these maps. Some of the basics is that this is a, a topo map or a topographic. It's showing the, the, the hills and the valleys, the topography. So the main thing that's on this map are the contour lines, so the topographic lines, that when little tiny numbers... Is showing what the elevation is. So I know this is probably a little bit too small for you to read. It says 11,600 feet. 
And the distance between the lines, that can vary a little bit. Uh, it'll be down on the bottom of the map. Contour interval, 40 feet. So each contour as I go up is 40 feet. And it takes a little, little bit of, of, of practice to read these and figure out that some places are peaks, like that's a high point in the terrain, and some places are valleys. So right here, it, I can tell I'm going downhill along those contour lines to a valley. The denser these contour lines, the steeper the terrain. So if I want to avoid steep terrain, I want to climb that peak, I'm not going to go up this really dense area contour lines. I'm going to look for the place that it's the least steep, so the widest spaces before, between the contour lines, probably up this ridge right here to get to that peak. So that's some of the key things. There's also shading. So here it's showing me this green is forest and this, this white is non-forest. That could be grass, that could be rocks. Since this is a mountain, it's probably rocky terrain. Um, but that's forest. So that's another thing you can use to kind of figure out where you're at. And then um, the scale. When I say 1 to 24,000, that means one inch on the map. Get my ruler here. One inch on the map is equal to 24,000 inches in the real world. Okay, that kind of makes some difficult math here. But if I kind of take my ruler here and put it along the scale here, that's about two and a half inches per mile. So if I want to do some route planning here, and the, the trails are on this map, you can kind of see where we hiked before, is I can roughly measure the length along the trail and get some idea how long it's going to take distance-wise. Here we camped at Camp 1. So that was about 8 inches, so 1 mile, 2 miles, 3 miles to get into the camp. Not very far for a first day, but it was completely covered with snow. Uh, when we did that. So follow along that line, try to measure that. Some people use rulers and just get a rough approximation. That's probably a little bit lower than it would be because there's a little more squigglies. Some people use wheels. There's special wheels for this. Sometimes I've used a piece, pizza cutter and count how many times that went around. Um, but this is the main map where I'm going to do a lot of my, my trip planning, either on paper or um, on the computer. And then we're going to print out one of these to use um, out, out, uh, outside. The ones we're going to have, we're going to have a, a few more things on it that this one doesn't have. And I'll show you that in another video. All right, let's look at the same thing of uh, doing some of this trip planning uh, on the computer. Now we're going to try to do the same thing, uh, a little bit more detail on our online map. So I've gone to... I've, I've gone to Gaia GPS's webpage. I've logged in as myself, and I've zoomed into uh, the northern part of Wisconsin. So I'm looking at a section of the North Country Trail here that I can see shows up. I just want to imagine like planning the first day of this trip, trying to get an idea how far we might go. So I think we're going to get there at uh, the trailhead about 9 a.m. We're going to have at least five hours of hiking. So five hours with two miles an hour, that's about 10 miles that we can go. So I want to see how far we can go and if there's anywhere that looks like a reasonable campsite within about 10 miles. So with these tools, I can get a rough idea. This isn't a, a great tool set, but it's pretty good. So over here to the left, there's this option to create a route. And this allows me to just click on different segments here. So I'm going to start at Highway 27 and then it will try to trace the trail for me. As, so as I click along the trail, it's going to try to follow that and give me an elevation profile and a total distance. So I'm at 1.3 miles here and a little bit of terrain, but not too much. And I'm going to go along until I get kind of close to 10 miles and see where that's going to get me. Okay, I've crossed a road. Don't want to camp near that, so I want to get away from the road for a ways. You can see a stream here. It'd be kind of nice to camp near the stream uh, as long as I'm following leave no trace. Okay, now I'm about eight miles, getting close. Uh, and I kind of look along here. There's there's a spring down here. Maybe near that spring would be good. Um, 
and I'm going to get a better sense for the train here. I'm going to turn on the satellite view and look at that. Okay, so we're kind of in heavy forest cover. Uh, and then there's a break and there's this meadow here. That might be a nice place to camp. And I get there at about 9.5, 9.6 miles. So that's a good place. So I'm going to say, all right, we're probably going to camp somewhere along here. Um, probably dispersed camping. Um, maybe in the guidebook it shows where the, the um, designated campsites are. Um, but if I know that they're not there, uh, and then I'm going to do dispersed camping, then this meadow looks like a good place for my to do that. Um, don't have water too close, so that may be something that I may want to go a little bit further uh, until I can access water. This may be a little bit of a creek down there. I can see some water there. Uh, so I may want to go a little, a little bit further. So we've got a water source. Um, okay, so 10.4, a little further than I want, but let's try that. All right, so <clears throat> I can I can save that, give it a name, save it, I can call it North Country Day One. Uh, I need some few options here, like public and so forth. I can edit the route. Um, but now I've got kind of a rough plan for what my first day is going to look like on the North Country Trail. So this is what we, we'd be doing if we were actually getting to hike on the North Country Trail. And 10 miles, uh, it'd be a long day, but, but doable. All right, I think you got the picture.